Okay, so Chris, find out, okay, somebody find out what page we're on. Um, Temptations and Seductions. 360 and 350. Yeah. Hey, y'all, Coach of the Fight here. Got the whole family with me. Hey, y'all. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, in today's video, we're going to be doing a lesson. What's the what's the uh, title of the lesson? Temptations and Subductions. Temptation and Subductions? Seductions. Seductions. Okay, this is class to be led by Stacy, and be prepared to leave a comment. Hit the like button. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. All of y'all, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together as a family, to study your word, to learn about your word, and learn of the things that you would have us to do. We ask that you will be with us, teach us, give us wisdom, give us understanding, give us discernment. We ask that you will um, teach us how to study your word correctly, how to rightfully abide your word to give us truth um, to let us let us not um, think of things that we would have to um, come forth and possibly make it make sense to us but um, give us the ability to discern the things that your word is actually saying we're asking for truth and we're asking for understanding we ask that you forgive us of our sins we thank you for um, each of the children that are here, we thank you that they have a willing attitude to learn your word. Um, and we ask that you will bless us throughout the day. Bless us with our Sabbath day preparations. And we ask that you will generally just show kindness to us throughout the day. Thank you for those that are listening. And we praise you for that in your name, in your son's name, the Messiah, our master. Amen. Amen. So temptation means that which tempts, especially to do evil. Enticed to evil, the act of testing or tempting, a state of mental conflict between heavenly and infernal influences. So a temptation is being tested and is usually in the form of evil, right? We say a prayer that says, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil, right? Lead me not into an evil testing. We don't want to go into evil testings, but when we are put into testings, when the Father tests us, because he does, we want to be delivered. We want to be able to come out of that testing. Um, to resist it. To resist it, yeah. One of the things, one of the reasons, and this here will might tell us that we are tested is because when you're tested and you're able to overcome that test, just like in school, when you're tested to um, do math, one plus one is two, two plus two is four. When you're tested in that and you learn math, um, addition and subtraction, now you can go to the next step, which is multiplication. So once you overcome a test, you can go to the higher, um, I guess, lesson. yeah, higher lesson, exactly, Journey. You can go to a higher lesson. Now that you've overcome multiplication, now you can start doing what? Word problems? Algebra. And then algebra, and then calculus, and then all that other stuff, crazy math they study in college. Okay. So we understand that temptations means testing, right? So you could say, lead me not into te testing, but deliver, lead me not into temptations, yeah. but deliver me from evil, Okay. Okay, and subductions. What does subductions mean? mean? What is a subduction? When you're being seduced, what does that mean? Um, Anybody know what the word subduction means? Seduced? You're trying to, like, 
make them um, come to do something. I don't know. Hmm. Persuade. Persuade, yeah. It says to seduce means to draw into error, evil, or disloyalty, to lead astray, right? To allure, persuade a person to do something that's evil. So we say, see that temptation is testing somebody to do evil, and subduction is trying to lead them into doing evil. Okay, let's start with 65. This lesson, this teaching will cover five verses, 65 through 70. Okay, we're going to start this reading off with Christian reading. Okay. Humanity cultivates many trees. The hunger and misery of men leads them to seek from them the shade and fruit that offer salvation, justice, or peace. Those trees are the doctrines of men, inspired many times in hatred, selfishness, ambition, and in delusions of grandeur. Their fruits are death, blood, destruction, and the outrage of that which is most sacred in the life of men, which is the liberty to believe, think, and speak in a word. He is deprived of the freedom of the spirit. Such is the darkness that arises to the struggle against the light. Okay. So it says mankind, when it says humanity, it's talking about human beings. It's talking about mankind. Mankind cultivates many trees. What does that mean? It means that they come up with many doctrines. The word cultivate means to work by stirring, fertilizing, sowing, and reaping, raising crops. So like Christians say, a man comes up, he raises many different kinds of doctrines, which is being in this uh, teaching is talked about as trees. The hunger and misery of man leads them to seek the shade and fruit that offers salvation, justice, and peace. We have a hunger inside of us that seeks the Father. That hunger will probably never go away from us. We want to assimilate our spirit man, not necessarily not our flesh. Our spirit man wants to go back to its maker. And that maker is who? God, yeah. Our spirit man yearns, he desire, he he wants to go back to the Father. He wants to assimilate back to the Father. The trees are the doctrines of men, teachings of men, inspired many times by hatred, selfishness, ambition, and the delusion of grandeur, the delusion that they're going to be somebody great, like me and dad. We're having the conversation the other time about how people will get on YouTube and make and do all this stuff that, for one, they know is not true, but they do it, or they know it's not real, but they do it in order to become grand, to be a YouTube star. I don't know if you, they're called YouTube star. They're called what? YouTube influencers, right? Mm -hmm. They want to be famous. They want, when you see them at, you know, the store or whatever, you say, hey, ain't that what you call from YouTube? And then you be all doty over them. And they do that many times by being selfish. They do it by telling untruths. Um, they do it to be ambitious. And they do it with the delusion that they are going to be grand. He says, their fruits are death, their fruits are blood, their fruits are destruction, and the outrage of that which is most sacred in the life of men, which is the freedom to believe, think, and speak in a word. He is deprived of the freedom of the spirit. He's depriving his, his spirit man to do the right thing. The spirit man, like we said, wants to assimilate back to the father who is righteousness. But he basically tells his conscience who is telling him to do right. 
to be quiet, go over there in the corner and sit down while I become a star, while I become a YouTube influencer, while I become a movie star. Right? Okay, Chris, 66. I have told you, beloved Israel, that the time shall come when the false spokesmen arise to give access to the false Jesus, and within their materialism they will deceive, saying that through, the, through them the master speaks. False guides, false prophets, and false soldiers shall arise, and with their word and their materialism seek to turn you from the road of light and truth. Isn't this what's happening? Have y'all ever got on and listened to some of the YouTube things that are trending? People are lying. People are being deceptive about just everyday material things. But if you definitely go on and listen to people talking about things of the Father, they're definitely telling untruths only to become famous. Just like, you know, when you um, listen to a lot of the, before we had YouTube, we had television evangelists to get our word from. And now that you know the truth, you sit back and you look at them now and they're just actors. You know, they're doing that to make money. To have, they have this false illusion of being grand. And... It says that they're false guides and they're false prophets and false soldiers. What does the word false mean? Not true. They do it for the sake of materialism. And they're saying that the master, who is who? Who, who does this tell us the master is? Jesus. It's, they're saying that the master told me to tell you this. Or thus says the Lord. Or Jesus is speaking through me. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's saying that that's not true. 67, Chris. Pray and see that this is the time in which my justice and my light have removed all the darkness. This is a difficult time full of dangers. For even the beings that inhabit the darkness shall pass themselves off among you as beings of light. To tempt you and confuse you. Okay, hold up right there, Chris. So it's saying that even these beings of darkness, these what we would call demons and um, spirits that are evil, are now penetrating this world and making us believe that they are... Um, I guess creatures of truth, but they're only using that person, and because he is an influencer, because he's popular, because he's an actor, um, because he has a lot of materialism, we believe that person, but they're just working, doing the work of darkness. Okay, Chris? I give you my light so that you do not de deviate from the road. And are not deceived by those who use my name. Those who use his name. Prophet. I am Prophet Jackson. I am Prophetess Jackson. Jackson. I am the Reverend Jackson. I am Deacon Jackson. I am Bishop Jackson. I am Bishop number one Jackson. I am Bishop number two Jackson. We got so many titles that when you hear that name, those titles you act you you immediately start to respect and reverend and you actually believe that they're telling the truth just because they have that title they're using the name of the father yet and still they're speaking darkness they want to be reverence but they're speaking untruth they've been tempted and they have been seduced okay Chris, 68. The tempters are not only from among the invisible beings. There are also those incarnated in men who speak of lessons that seem like those of the light, but which are in contradiction to my doctrine. 
to these do not listen. So he's saying those, the tempters, those who are tested, those who come to seduce and try to draw you away from what the Father is actually saying, he's saying don't listen to them. Those that tell you we're not supposed to follow this entire book. We're just supposed to, you know, follow the Ten Commandments. Everything else, the Messiah, the Master did away with when he went to the cross. They tell us that. They tell us that even though we're, we're, we sin, we're, we're still going to go to heaven. We can do anything if we ask for forgiveness. They're trying to draw you away, maybe not purposely. A lot of them are not doing it on purpose. A lot of them have been uh, seduced by darkness. I mean, you know, we were there at one time. We believe that this entire Bible was not meant for us today. We, didn't, we believe that we weren't supposed to do the laws. At one time, we believed we weren't supposed to do the, the, the feast days. We weren't supposed to do all this stuff that the Bible is telling us to do. The Father is telling us, don't forget this. Do this from generation to generation to generation. We believe that the people who are in front of us, who are influencers, who are famous, who have a lot of materialism, who are prettier and well more well-spoken and, you know, they got the stuff. We were seduced by them, and we believed everything that they're saying, everything that they said. He says that what they're saying is a contradiction to his teaching, and he tells us plainly, do not listen to them. 69, Chris. My kingdom is strong and powerful. And if to confront my strength and power, I have permitted the rise of another power, that of evil. It is to demonstrate my own, so that you may behold and feel the strength of light and truth against the imposter and the darkness. It is so that you can see that the realm of darkness, disturbances, and trials, while having great power, is only my instrument, and I make use of it truly. So the father is saying he has allowed this kingdom of darkness to come and penetrate the world, but he allows it for his use. Don't ever think that he's not in control. Don't ever think that darkness is going to win. Don't ever think that we can do whatever we want to do. And the father, you know, he's sitting up there or he's sitting and I say up there because, you know, that's just something that we're used to saying. We're thinking he's up there. But he's sitting. He's existing. And he's not. He's not up there with his hands tied. Yeah. He's not in control. That Satan has won. That evil has won. The father says, I permit this to happen so that. I can use it. Sort of like I allow you to go out there and get in trouble. Let's take, for example, I tell, um, we'll take, use Dante for example. I tell Dante, Dante, you probably don't need to go over there and make that loan at that bank. And he said, yeah, mom, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it. And I can't convince him to go not make that loan at the bank. So I said, okay, go ahead. Go on and do it. I allowed him to go ahead and make that mistake, knowing that it was going to mistake. So knowing that it was going to be a mistake and detrimental to him and his family so that he can learn from it. I allow you to go out and make those mistakes so that you can learn from them. You know, I allow you to go out and um, stick your hand in that beehive. I told you not to. 
But you think that you're faster than the bees. You can stick it in there and pull that honey out real quick and run. Okay, go ahead. I have the Tylenol and the Benadryl sitting here waiting for you when you when you get to the house. So that's what the father is doing. He's in control. He's still active. He's still seeing what's going on. But he's using that darkness for our benefit. Okay, 70. And this is our last one. If I test you, it is not to stop you on the path of evolution, for I await your arrival in my kingdom. However, I wish you to arrive victorious after the combat, strong after the struggle, full of the light of spiritual experience after the long journey, and full of the merits of the Spirit, so that you may humbly raise your face and behold the Father in an instant when he comes to place upon you his blessing kiss. A kiss that contains all the happiness and all the perfections for your spirit. So this tells us that the Father is testing us. You know, we a lot of times we say, well, the Father doesn't test us. Well, he, he's, that's a contradiction to what Scripture is saying. We have to go through a test in order to have a testimony. Right? We have to go to the struggle, through the struggle, in order to gain strength. The other day... When the seedlings were alive before the frost came and killed them all or the freeze, we had some zucchini seeds that were coming up. And you know how when the seeds come up, they still have that little shell of a seed still on them before they open up their first leaves. And I was going to take that shell off. And Christian said, no, mom, don't take that off. And I'm like, why not? You know, I'm helping the, I'm helping the plant. It's going to have to come off eventually. But what I learned that Christian probably already knew is that that shell needs to stay on there so it's a part of the plant. It help, it's helping to strengthen the plant. You know what I'm saying? Sort of like that. Is that right, Chris? Right. And there's also, I was reading a story one time when this guy was watching a very expensive and rare butterfly come out of its chrysalis but it looked like the butterfly was struggling to get out and it was having an extreme amount of trouble getting out so the guy went and got some scissors and cut the hole a little bit bigger and then the butterfly flopped out in a big mess crawled a little bit and then died and it turned out that the butterfly needed to force its way through that tiny hole so that its blood would go into its wings and it could open them up yeah. And since he cut that hole out now, the butterfly had no way of getting that blood out of its body, and so it died. Yeah, that makes me think of biddies, right, Chris? Right. They need to be able to peck, them way, peck their way through that hole. You know, we can go in a system, oh, he's having such a hard time, I see his head, he's trying to get out of there. But as he's pecking his way through there, he's gaining strength, is that correct? Kind of. He's gaining strength and he's, I guess he's feeding on the shell too. So a lot of things are happening. So we're not supposed to go and finish cracking that shell and help him get through because we actually hurt him. And the father is saying that that's what's happening. I'm allowing you to go through these things so that you'll get stronger. You'll get stronger after your struggle. You'll become victorious after your combat. You'll be full of the light of spiritual experience after the long journey that you go through. A lot of things that have happened to us, if we hadn't uh, went through that struggle, we wouldn't be able to successfully sit here together as a family. If someone would have, and even the father would have came and bailed us out, like so many times I know I asked him to do. I asked him to come bail us out. I didn't want to go through it anymore. Those first years were very hard. But if he would have, then I wouldn't be sitting here today able to give a testimony to someone else that, hey, you can do it. It's going to be hard. But the struggle is for a reason. So when we are tempted and when we are put in a situation where we're about to be seduced by evil, he says to pray, 
to call on him, to ask him to lead us through this temptation. Not necessarily take it away from us. I know we want to. It gets hard. You know, you get hungry, especially when you ain't got nothing to eat but some uh, garlic leaves. And you're like, Lord, you know, this ain't working. But now you're able to know that you're, you're going to be provided for. You're going to survive. Right? So that was our lesson on t temptations and seductions. Uh, anybody got anything they want to say or want to add to the class? Anybody been in situations where you have been t tempted or you have been seduced and you asked the father to come and do away with it right now and he didn't? We all have, right? So we have to pray, ask him. Don't try to go and do it yourself. First, ask him and then basically wait for him to come and relieve us for it because it's for a reason. The struggle is for a reason. All right. And with that, we're going to thank the Father for the sermon and thank him for uh, giving us the opportunity to study his word because, like I always say, guys, it's a privilege to be able to know about the Third Testament. That's one thing. Praise the Father for that. But it's a greater privilege to be able to read it, have time to read it, and to learn from it. So uh, y'all always thank the Father for the opportunity to know this Third Testament because it's probably just 1% or less than 1% of the people who know it and accept it as sacred writings from the Father. So thank the Father for um, this, this time and this opportunity. And with that, we're going to thank also our listening uh, subscribers on YouTube. We ask that you will leave a comment. What do you think? Have you been tempted? Have you given in to that temptation? Of course, you know, we all have. But how did you handle it? How did you handle it if you were ever seduced? Let us know in our comments, in the comments below. If you will, hit that bell notification so that you can come back and um, be a part of our family Bible reading and we appreciate and we love you all and with that we'll say shalom shalom bye shalom.